Hey there! Today I'm going to talk about Dark Souls, but a very specific aspect of it. The online component. Nowadays, online gaming has become huge. You usually can't find a major release without some kind of online component to it. Whether you're racing, fighting, or just questing together, video games have become a very social experience. But when I think of unique online games, I don't think of games like Overwatch. I think of games like Journey, and what's probably a more typical example, Dark Souls. You see, in Dark Souls, there are two types of online mechanics. First, there are messages left by other players. This is indirect, as you never see the players who left a message, but at least you get to use language to communicate. The other mechanic is player summoning, and this is completely the opposite experience. You get to directly interact with the player in the same game world. It's goal-orientated, so either you're helping each other fight through a level and kill the boss, or you're trying to kill each other. There are real gameplay consequences of death, with the constant risk of losing all your experience. And throughout all of that, there is no language for you to use. You're extremely limited in how you're able to communicate with other players. Now, technically, there is an online voice chat option in the games, it's just... In all my time playing, I've never heard anybody use it. And I think a lot of Dark Souls players will agree that playing online is a very silent experience. But that's okay, I actually prefer it that way. I find this really cool because players still have no problems communicating with each other. Now, if you've played the games, you might not find this too special. Of course, it's obvious what you're supposed to do. But I still find this an interesting concept. Think about situations where one player is teaching the other about secrets or hidden shortcuts. You're communicating these complex ideas without language, and that in itself seems like a fairly difficult task. But then you do this through a video game where you have no body language or facial expressions to convey emotions. So let's talk about it. Language and communication can be boiled down into a concept called mentalization. It's the ability to understand the intentions of others. Normally, we experience these things together. People communicate through either talking, reading, or writing. But is it possible to communicate without language? Here's a better way to frame this question. Is mentalization intrinsically linked to language, or are these two things functionally distinct? On the one hand, some evidence suggests that language is necessary. Say you get participants to perform two tasks at the same time. One is designed to focus on mentalization and the other on language. We find that performance on the mentalization task decreases. This suggests that the two tasks share the same system. The idea here is that the language task puts a load on the language system, which reduces resources available to perform mentalization. On the flip side though, there is some good evidence these things really are distinct after all. Some fMRI studies have shown a neural dissociation between mentalization and language. Mentalizing seems to involve the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex, which is distinct from typical language areas. Even more evidence that these systems are distinct comes from examining aphasic patients. Aphasia is a speech and language disorder that severely impairs the language system. An aphasic patient can lose the ability to read and write and even speak. So if mentalization is truly inseparable from language, you might expect somebody without a functional language system be heavily impaired in their ability to mentalize. So I found a group of researchers who looked at this. They had aphasics play a nonverbal communication game. Something a lot less complicated than Dark Souls, obviously, to try and measure their ability to mentalize. It's called the Tacit Communication Game. In this, two players are shown a simple 3x3 three three grid. Each player gets a player piece in a random location with a color and orientation. The goal's simple. You have to get your piece to the correct position on the grid with the right orientation. During your turn, you can move anywhere on the board, so really, you can get to your position on the first turn. The catch is that only one player gets to know these positions. The first player is shown what their and the second player's goals are. They get to move around first and get to their position. Both players are put in separate rooms so they can't see each other, but they can still see the same game screen. So even though they're not face to face, they can still see the same thing. The only way to be successful is for the second player to somehow figure out what their goal is from the first player. Otherwise, they have to guess, and their success rate should be somewhere around 1 out of 27 each turn. So I think the game ends up being pretty unique because it requires communication to play without any language involved. Despite that, the game can be played just fine. The best strategy is usually for the first player to move their piece over to the second player's goal, hang there for a few seconds, and then go to their own position to finish. The key is that the second player has to understand that the first player is going out of their way to communicate something to them. Hanging over a position where they didn't need to go makes it apparent that this movement was intentional, and that this location is important. Assuming both players know their goal in the game, the second player can apply that this is where they're supposed to be. It's really not a complex game, and I think the challenge comes out of getting the players to generate an effective strategy like this on their own. They're not instructed to do this. So now the question is, how do our physics perform? If mentalization is linked to language, we should expect their performance to be impaired in the game because language is impaired, so mentalization is impaired. But if mentalization is distinct from language, they should be able to play just fine, right? 
Well, they do play just fine. Four patients with severe agrammatical aphasia were asked to play this game. They all performed well above chance levels, reaching similar performance to controls. Their strategies were also similar, intentionally pausing at the other player's goal locations. This is good evidence to suggest that mentalization is distinct from language. They involve different processing and can work independently from each other. So what I'm trying to get at with all of this is that online play in Souls games is an example of mentalization without language. The player and their summoned phantoms can't talk to each other, but they can still communicate pretty complex ideas. And honestly, strategies people use are often similar to the tacit communication game. Take a situation where a phantom knows that there is a hidden wall and doesn't want the player to miss it. They can't break it themselves because only the host has an effect. So what do they do? Well, in my experience, they go up to the location and they pause there. They make it obvious that they're intentionally trying to draw the host's attention. Maybe they act out what they want the host to do by attacking the wall. You're able to communicate that there is a hidden secret here to investigate. Or maybe there's an alternate path that requires you to drop down from a ledge, something that requires precision. How do you communicate that? Well, again, you get the host's attention, you go hang by the area you have to drop from, make it obvious you're doing this intentionally, and when they're watching, drop down. Then wait for them to follow and hopefully not kill themselves. You get this really complex communication in Dark Souls, a game that requires constant awareness of your surroundings and where a wrong move can mean instant death and all without language. And even though Dark Souls is a very different and more in-depth game than a simple tacit communication experiment, strategies are actually really similar when you don't have verbal communication to rely on. It's almost like you try to use some sort of agency on the pieces that you do have some control over, like a kind of body language. 